So hello friends, welcome to my channel Medicine Era. Today we are going to start the pathophysiology of rheumatoid arthritis. So what do you mean by rheumatoid arthritis? It is mainly a chronic inflammatory and autoimmune disorder of joints. Okay, mainly it happens in the later ages or in case of the geriatric patients. What is chronic inflammation? Chronic inflammation is a process by which any type of inflammatory reactions are happened in any portion of our organs or body which uh, persist of different type of soiling and different type of reactions which continues for a longer period of time that is called chronic inflammation and also what is autoimmune disorder autoimmune disorder means this is a problem in which our own immunity system attacks our own organs own parts of the body so this is called autoimmunity so this disorder is very dangerous in case of geriatric patients and uh, this will affects our immunity system okay so this is called as rheumatoid arthritis and mainly it is a disorder of joints or bones so at first starting with the disorder we have to know what are the parts of joints or what are the anatomical position of joints so a joint is consist of two bones this one and this one and these brain portions are called as articular cartilage which are mainly responsible to prevent any type of friction between the two bones and this round shaped portion is called as the joint capsule or synovial membrane and this is responsible for containing the synovial fluid which is responsible for uh, any type of lubrication between the two joints okay and these joints are also surrounded by different type of lymph nodes and blood vessels because these blood vessels and lymph nodes are responsible for supply of different type of inflammatory cells when it is required and also oxygen and also uh, different type of nutrition to the joints and bones so there must be a different autoimmune reaction which is mainly responsible for the swelling of joints and destruction of the bones and cartilages so this problem is um, coincidentally known as the rheumatoid arthritis so what are the etiology what are the reasons of rheumatoid arthritis mainly according to the scientist the HLA-DR1 and HLA-DR4 means human leukocyte antigen DR1 and human leukocyte antigen DR4. These two type of gene activation is mainly responsible for the rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, uh, except that smoking pathogen mainly gut bacteria, the bacteria which are uh, mainly persist in our guts or intestine, they are also responsible for rheumatoid arthritis. So these are the two reasons. So we have to understand the detailed pathogenesis or how the disease is progressed in the human body in case of rheumatoid arthritis. So I have told it earlier that this is an autoimmune disorder. So in case of autoimmune disorder, there must be some inflammatory reaction or there must be some reaction between antigen and antibody which is responsible for this particular disorder. Okay, so we are going to start the pathogenesis. At first, the antibodies, IgG antibodies type to collagen and vimentin. These are the products which are responsible for different type of protective factors in our body. And in case of the activation of HLA-DR1 and HLA-DR4, these two genes, these type of antibodies are mutated and going into self-antigen stage or they are converted into self-antigen due to a uh, different amino acid proportion change in, our, in their body is mainly responsible for their self-antigenic behavior. Okay, so this self-antigen formation is very important. In case of self-antigen formation, these self-antigens are going to the lymph nodes and these lymph nodes are mainly responsible for the uh, division of that cell antigens and increase their numbers. Or in case of lymph nodes, these self-antigens are attached with the CD4 T cells. They are the inflammatory cells and in case of attachment with the CD4 T cells, they are activating the beta cells. The beta cells are mainly responsible for generation of the plasma cells and these plasma cells are mainly responsible for generation of different antibodies which are attacking the antigens. So there will be a conversion reaction, means self-antigen to, they are activating the CD4 T cells and after activation of the CD4 T cells, they are activating the beta cells and after activating of the beta cells, they are activating the plasma cells which are responsible for the generation of different type of antibodies which are mainly responsible for attacking the antigens. And after the formation of different type of plasma cells, the antibodies against self-antigens are produced, okay, from the plasma cells and this uh, antibodies are mainly activating the T cells and after activating the T cells the macrophages are activated okay these macrophages are mainly uh, responsible for the exocytosis and endocytosis process means they are mainly engulfing the 
uh, antigen which are externally invaded in our body. So after the activation of T cells, it will also activate the macrophages and after the ma activation of macrophages, it will generate the TNF alpha or tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin 1 and interleukin 6. These type of inflammatory molecules are responsible for the formation of PANAS. What is PANAS? PANAS is a inflamed or swallowing synovial membrane of the joint. This membrane is inflamed okay and due to the formation of panas and that is very uh, fatal because if the synovial membrane is inflamed the joint also become the inflamed or inflammation is persistent and very painful okay so due to the panas formation the bone irritation cartilage breakdown is also happened so this panas formation is also an important phenomena in case of rheumatoid arthritis okay so after the panas formation there are different type of scenarios are there in case of t cells there is a particular protein that is called rankle okay this rankle protein is attached with the rank rank is also a different type of protein and after the attachment of rankle and rank it will form the osteoclast and these osteoclast cells are very much responsible for the degeneration of bones so there are two factors mainly panas formation and osteoclast formations which are mainly responsible for the degeneration of bones okay after that two factors are over then the rheumatoid factor plays its role and after the formation of rheumatoid factor it will forms the immune complex and this immune complex is responsible for the formation of complement system complement system is a important phenomena in case of inflammatory responses okay so after the formation of complement system it will create the chronic inflammation in the joints and in case of chronic inflammation it will also create angiogenesis and Angio angiogenesis means formation of new blood capillaries from the existing blood vessel so the blood capillaries or existing blood vessel uh, the number of them are increased so due to the increment of that existing blood vessels more and more inflammatory cells are coming to the joints and more and more infiltration of that particular inflammatory cells are mainly responsible for the total inflammation of that particular joint this will also result in rheumatoid arthritis okay so this is the main process okay so you have to take in your mind that there are mainly three processes mainly panas formation osteoclast formation and also the formation of complement system they are mainly responsible the formation of the rheumatoid arthritis it means the degeneration of bones inflammation of joints or the synovial membrane and also the degeneration or destruction of the cartilage so they are very dangerous so bones cartilage and joints destruction so this is the total process of pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis now we will start the different clinical manifestations or extra rheumatoid manifestations of that particular disease this disease not only affects the joints or bones but also it will affect different parts of the body this is the most dangerous phenomenon of this particular disease so in case of brain it will causes interleukin 6 accumulation which will cause pyrogen accumulation and causes fever in case of lungs it will cause fibroblast formation means uh, fibroblast means the scar tissue formation and that will cause the decrease of the gaseous exchange and that will cause the liquid in pleura or accumulation of liquid in the pleural cavity that is called as pleural effusion okay so in case of brain, in case of lungs, in case of liver, it will cause the hepidin formation and it will cause the absorption of the iron molecule decreased okay, in the liver. In case of skeletal muscle, it will cause the breakdown or the protein mass or the muscle mass will be decreased. In case of blood vessels, it will cause atherosclerosis, means atheroma formation or formation of the fibroflatic plaques inside the blood vessels and that will cause heart attacks or also causes the different type of cardiovascular problems. Okay. In case of skin, it will causes the rheumatoid nodule formation that will also a very dangerous aspect. In case of rheumatoid arthritis, you have to keep in your mind that this problem creates the collateral and symmetrical joints. In case of hand, that is metacarpalopharyngeal joints. In case of hand, also proximal interpharyngeal joints. In case of legs, this is metatarsalopharyngeal joints. These two, th three type of joints are mainly affected by rheumatoid arthritis because they are the collateral and symmetrical joints. Okay. In case of swallowing warm, great, painful joints, morning stiffness, these are the also characteristics which are persist in rheumatoid arthritis. Means morning stiffness, you have to stiff your body, you have to feeling very stiffed when you wake up in the morning. And also swallowing warm, red, and painful joints in the morning. Okay. Swan neck deformity, it means it will a deformity in your hand which uh, looks like a swan neck, looks like that. So your hand becomes stiffed and uh, formation like that this is called as swan neck deformity buttonhole deformity in means it uh, creates your hand in deformed side or it will create the hand in uh, this type of buttonhole deformity or popliteal cyst it means it will formation of a cyst in the backyard of your 
knees this is called as popliteal cyst so these are the three deformities which are mainly uh, which are mainly uh, this in the, in the case of uh, rheumatoid arthritis this is a swan neck deformity buttonhole deformity and also popliteal cyst also in case of rheumatoid arthritis the fever low appetite malaise and pleural effusions are occurred what is malaise malaise means feeling of discomfort this is the main problems of this particular disease and the most dangerous thing is that when the rheumatoid arthritis splenomegaly splenomegaly means inflammation of the spleen and also uh, inflammation of spleen or lymph node this is called as splenomegaly in case of granulocytopenia or means when the granulocyte number is decreased in case of a particular human being this is called as granulocytopenia so these three type of characteristics are when accumulate with each other means rheumatoid arthritis splenomegaly and granulocytopenia this are a very dangerous situation which is life threatening also okay so these are the main clinical manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis you have to keep in your mind that this particular disease is not only for joint it also affects the different organs or different parts of our body because it is an autoimmune disorder and it will create different type of problems in a human being mainly in case of the geriatric patients okay so what are the managements in case of management you have to take in your mind that uh, the physiotherapy or proper physical exercise will be considered in case of management and in case of pharmacological management or drug management it is anti-rheumatoid arthritis drugs mainly methotrexate hydroxychloroquine and sulfasalazine are used in case of biological response modifiers they are rituximab and infuximab these type of medications are used and in case of management of pain or in case of management of swelling different type of nsaids non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and glucocorticoids are also used so these are the managements of rheumatoid arthritis this is the total overview of rheumatoid arthritis you have to take in consideration that you have to know the pathophysiology pathogenesis etiology also the clinical manifestations and management of that particular disorder so i hope you have liked the channel and also go to the description box of that video for my notes and please subscribe like share and comment on my channel see you at next time thank you